with another Pavis Perspective. It's episode three. It's been a while since we've uh, done another one, but we've been trying to line up some guests and we've got some exciting guests for the future. Um, we're almost at 700 subs, which is crazy for us. You know, it, We've come so far in such a short space of time. We, we were aiming for 500 by the end of the season. So, I mean, to be at this point now, we couldn't really be any happier. And yeah. if you're not already... Please make sure you're subscribed. Yeah, it makes a massive difference. So going on, um, as you can see, we're in a different setting to usual. Um, that can't be helped, but um, yeah, but like George said, we've got some some big guests coming up soon that hopefully you'll enjoy. Um, but we thought it's perfect point of the season um, with the running coming in and after the big win against Chesterfield to record a paper's perspective. We love doing it, so massive uh, opportunity to do it. And it has been, I think, October the last time we did one, and we've had a few people asking for for episodes. So. It's, it's good. It's kind of nice to just sit down and talk about it, isn't it? Mm. Without them, but like being after a game, it can be quite a manic, can't it? Yeah, yeah. It's nice for us to get an opportunity to really say what we what we want to say about it as well. Yep. Um, slightly different format as well. We've been asking for questions on Twitter and Instagram. Had quite a few Instagram replies, haven't we? So yeah. Um, next time we do one of these, get involved. But we're going to answer a few of your questions. Um, on topics you want us to talk about, and then also uh, we're going to talk about a few things that that we've we've got on our mind as well should yeah. we kick it off yeah let's go okay so we've got first question is from Dan Pickering so he said um, why isn't Ross Fitzsimmons getting a look in now as of today what's happened gone back to Chesterfield I couldn't see that happening myself I was surprised when I saw it but not surprised you know you were seeing things before the, the Chesterfield game in the build up where uh, Pendleton was saying uh, Fitzsimmons wants to come back but I just thought it was probably him playing yeah. mind games, trying to get one up on us because you know they're in a bit of a dire state at the moment. Um, but obviously, it must have been an element of truth to it. Yeah, it's a real shock. But for me, there's been a few t- telltale signs for from Ardley. I uh, I think he's not been overly complimentous of uh, Fitzsimmons. You know, the, the the penalty he was like, oh well, it wasn't a very good penalty, you know, but he had to make the save. But I think. It, you know, Slocum would have made that penalty save. Yeah. It would have had a different sort of... I, I don't know. I just feel like something may have gone on behind the scenes that we don't really know about. I think if you look at that penalty, you know, and, and I was saying this after the game, if Fitzsimmons goes the wrong way, Bowden gets um, major praise for how cool he slotted that ball away. Yeah. Penalties are never good. Never, you never have... Um, you never score a bad penalty. Yeah. And you never miss a good penalty. Yeah, yeah, things like that. Like, yeah, yeah. Um, if yeah, it's, he has to be there to make the save. He has to guess the right way, regardless of how bad it is. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so as of today, we've signed Joe McDonald, haven't we? Mm. Uh, I think he's been released by Wimbledon. Now we've done a bit of digging, and I think it's in five seasons for Wimbledon, he's had twenty four league appearances in five seasons. So break that down, it's like just under five, about five a season. Yeah, and he's had loans at Basingstoke and Hendon not at the same level that we're at he's 25 though isn't he so in in his career so far he's, he's not even played 60 senior no. senior games no which uh, I think that's a strange one but you, to a degree you sort of have faith in the system that we have in place because you look yeah. at the likes of like Wharton and you're looking at his record and it was like oh, what? why are we getting him in and now look so <laughs> you sort of have that little bit of faith but when you look at how Fitzsimmons played on Saturday, you sort of left feeling like, well, that's sort of strange. The thing is, we've got this system and it's brought in players like Richard Brindley, who for most of the season have been very good. Yeah. Um, Wotton, like you've said, Thomas, it, it's not bought a terrible player in yet. Even the players that haven't performed that well, like um, Shields, they're a good backup option to have. Oh, absolutely. And in some games, they're, like if people got on the end of his crosses, he's got four or five assists. Mm. But this is massive. Like we're now a team chasing promotion, and definitely the playoffs. Mm-hmm. <sighs> there's a, there's going to be a lot of trust put in his hands, isn't there? I can think of some games like Fylde at home, Dagenham at home, where he's made like good saves. Torquay at home, where we've comfortably won in the end. But Fitzsimmons had to make a save at nil nil or one nil. Yeah. <sighs> no, yeah. Not Fitzsimmons, Slocum. Yeah, yeah. Has had yeah. to make a save like. Yeah, he, no, yeah, he's definitely pulled us out of the dirt a few times, Slocum has. So yeah. he's been very good this season, so he's got big boots to fill, I think. This has got to be right. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And it's obviously <clears throat> in close quarters of Ardley because he would have been at uh, Wimbledon when Ardley was there. Mm. 
Let's go back to what what Dan was asking though. Why isn't why isn't he getting a look in? One of the things I think is he's he's, he's not good enough. He's played well when he's been counted on. Unbelievable save on on Saturday. Um, I I, I don't think on. he's a bad keeper. I just think he lacks consistency. Yeah, like he's a good keeper. Don't like the save he pulled off at the end of the game. I saw a different angle of it that Knotts put it on Twitter. Unbelievable save. From the family, family stand there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So from that perspective, I mean, but but at the same time, we picked up on Saturday that he couldn't catch a cold. Like yeah, he, yeah. His yeah hand he, never, he spilled it a few times. His yeah. handling was poor. Like it take it just takes a team like who did Chesterfield have up front? They had that big BFG guy. Yeah, it looked like they just got him off terrible. The fans coach. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> who was um? Who were we saying he looked like? Valuev was it? Valuev, yeah. that's but, a seven foot guy. Yeah, but it, it all it takes is a team to have a poacher. Yeah, exactly. And, and they've and they've 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 come on one of the spilled like you saw we spilled one against Dagenham. Yes, the penalty we've said was a decent decent save, but he spilled the penalty, and you can't be spilling those either. Yeah, I just I just think it's too much has gone on with him to have him as first choice. Yeah, I agree. I I also think some some must have gone on. I mean, I'm not saying anything did. I don't know if anything did, but I just just something just doesn't feel right. Yeah, he's like that is that like the within a few weeks he's joined Chesterfield, been recalled, saved the penalty, saved the penalty, <laughs> saved the saved the absolute top bins shot, and now he's gone back to Chesterfield. The, like that that that's the crazy. That's one of the maddest things. Like you don't get that in football ever. Never. When do you ever hear something like that? Mm, it's crazy, especially Actually, when it's like uh, uh, a rival as well. I know. Never would that happen. But that also fits Simmons. That shows crazy professionalism. Oh yeah, Absolutely yeah, yeah, crazy. yeah. Yeah, fair play to him. I've got nothing but nice words to say about Fitzsimmons, you know. I think he's a good keeper. I, I think it's yeah. good that he had that performance on TV as well because I think that would be good for his his career. Not so much his, his um, career at Knotts or Chesterfield. Mm. But I think to have a good performance like that on the stage it was on, I think it would be good for him. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, I'll move on. So thanks, Dan, for the question. Um, loads to talk about with that one, just for a simple goalkeeping position. Yeah. Crazy. So you wanted to go on something, didn't you? you to yeah, yeah. So the main the main topic of this segment that we're going to do now is going to be like Cal Roberts, but we're also going to tie it in with like the owners and the way that they've been signing certain players. So Cal Roberts slightly touched on that as well. Yeah, yeah. So um, Saturday was the first time I saw Cal Roberts play, and every time he, he he got the ball, he was energetic. He was driving it forward, even when he lost the ball or. We we're on the defensive side of the game. He was tracking back and sprinting. Like uh, he's probably one of our. Well, he's prob. I can't see as our best winger, but I think if it had been in since the start of the season, it'd be a s- stiff competition between him and Enzio. Yeah, it it'd definitely have a few goals. You know, he got the great assist straight on Morton's head. You know, I mean, and he's got that partnership. Like he's linked up already with what. Every it's time so they promising. Up, yeah, it's. And I've said I've said it a couple of times in the in the fan chats as well, for not to be signing young talents that are on the rise instead of old talents that are looking at getting a decent retirement. It's n- nothing but good things to say. No. Like, the, the owners have have really shown what they're about. They've not chucked it all over social media. Things have happened, and the first thing you've heard of it is when it's happened, mm. not two weeks before this is going to happen you know yeah, yeah. Oh, I've been watching the train, the training ground and the team look amazing and then you go out and lose 3-0 like mm. just all that's gone and it's it's just we've said it before it's just a breath of fresh air yeah that Robert signing <clears throat> took me a minute to realise who he was obviously I'd known that he'd gone from Newcastle to Blythe now Blythe are a team that are second to bottom as we're filming this um, and he scored 17 yeah I, I think as well uh, alongside his his like that's a huge jump because he was on the bench for Newcastle. You know, I, I think he may have played in the FA Cup, but he never played in the Premiership. But he was on the bench a lot. So to go from that f- to being released to go into the sixth division of football, yeah, that shows huge character to mm, me. Mm. I mean, that is a huge kick, you know. And to get back up and dust yourself down and come back and be playing like he was at Blythe and now hopefully at Knotts. I think he's going to be a, a great player. I know it's only social media and we shouldn't take too much from it, but like on on his Twitter and things like that, it's just posting about knots all the time. Like he, he's he seems to have already got like he posted something about Enzio and it's like they've already got that 
yeah, that yeah. Band going. You could see that um, against Chesterfield. They they were swapping wings, weren't they? Yeah. Um, and they were linking up like two wingers linking up. They dropped narrow when we attacked, and then basically you've got to deal with with Roberts, Enzio, Thomas, and Woodson. There's only one way to put it, isn't there? Really, Real Madrid vibes. Real Madrid vibes. <laughs> yeah, as Will said in the fan chat. <laughs> <laughs> got your, uh, he, he actually if you haven't already seen it have a look at, at we'll put it in the chat. description because he, uh, what a video he likened bear in mind the first time he's seen him he likened Carl Roberts to Gareth Bale <laughs> um, <laughs> a bit of a stretch but it was a good first performance you can see where he's coming from mm, no I can you yeah, can see yeah. it well, if he had a top knot <laughs> No, but yeah, staying on point. Uh, I mean, you, you look across the board. You you know, we said it earlier. We've got Wharton. You know, obviously Cal Roberts now. You know, Enzio's. He wasn't signed under them. I know, but to keep him and him being in the first team is actually spot on. Oh yeah, absolutely. Like his post match interview, he's he, all about the team. Uh, I think he, he must be like the only player from last season that uh, oddly didn't bring in that's still in the team. He hits. Yeah. And I think yeah. that shows a lot because when you when you actually look at the team, they're all oddly signings other than Enzio. Yeah, I'm gonna say something now, and I have ne- I've never said this about him. I think in the running, he's not the most important player. Yeah. Or yeah. Enzio. Enzio. Oh yeah, yeah, hundred percent. I think he's not. The way he's putting shifts in now, it is the is our best player. Yeah, oh, 100%. Did you 100%. S- obviously you saw the the turn on the halfway line. He made he made the Chesterfield centre middle like a schoolboy. Yeah. And then you could see him what Holly said it in her fan check. We winding up to hit that. It's not only one way that's going. <laughs> and if if he puts in performances like that every game for the rest of this season, we're going to be up there. We are. Yeah. He is an unbelievable player when he's in form. Yeah. I just hope his confidence doesn't get knocked again for any reason. I, I, I can't see that happening now. I, I think hopefully we stay on this high. You know, we had a bit of a blip here in the last two games leading up to this. We didn't actually get a goal, but uh, I think we put those those ones to bed where everyone's thinking, when are we going to score? Because we scored three past Chesterfield, even though they're struggling. But it was still a fierce game. You know, that Chesterfield yeah. bought, I think it was like 1,600 fans. A huge support they'd all left by the 80th minute but that's not the point they all <laughs> left by the 65th minute <laughs> but uh, it's always nice to get one over on the rivals but yeah I get what you're saying about Carl Roberts Oh, he, yeah. he could be the sign in to uh, you know really kick us on like mm. and then that leaves Osborne on the bench what a player I know but this is like, we always have nothing good to say about Osborne but nothing but bad yeah. no Nothing but good. Nothing, yeah. Nothing but good. Yeah, get my words wrapped up now. Um, but you know, you know, say if Shields was playing over Osborne, you'd sort of be like, oh, what, mm. what's going on? But with Roberts coming in and playing the way he is, you sort of not not forgetting about Osborne, but it's not so much at the forefront of your mind that Osborne would have done this, Osborne would have done that, because I think Roberts is probably the more rounded player. You've got to feel for Osborne a bit though. Yeah, yeah. I, I, Just yeah. breaks into the first team and. And then an opportunity, I don't know. Opportunity comes, have we been scouting Roberts since last season? I don't know. But the opportunity comes and if you're just going to boil it down to who's the better player, it's, it's Roberts. Yeah. But what an impact sub to have if you need it. I, I do think Osborne will come on to be a great player though. M- maybe, you know, he'll, there'll be an injury and he'll get some game time or he might go out on loan. I'd like to see him get some uh, play time <coughs> in and, you know. but Yeah. I right, move on. So, second question that we got sent in was from Rob. So, he's sort of joined in two questions in one. So, we'll go with the first part. So, um, after that performance, would you continue to play Kelly Evans at left back? That's a shout. Uh, in a word, probably not. It was a great performance, but his left foot isn't great. I, like, put him at right back. We, we, we love Kelly Evans. You know, he, he put a right shift in. And right. I think he played very well. Didn't look out of position, but his left foot isn't great. Right. Why do we like McCrory playing? Le- uh, why do we like Bakayoko playing left back? Because he's attacking. Okay. Kelly Evans was attacking. He yeah. was bombing forward. Why do we like McCrory at left back? Because defensive. Kelly Evans was solid. Yeah, he is. Yeah. Yeah, but put him at right back. Brilliant. I know, but like, you just look at all the fullbacks we've got. Like, you could literally slot him anywhere. 
I suppose, I suppose, in relation to that, I suppose you can't be too harsh. But if you are on your weaker foot, you know you're probably not favoured. No, but if you put in a performance like that, oh, absolutely, like, yeah. do do this, do this. This right. is the thing, though. Like for me, he puts in these performances when he drops in a right back, but then he's not rewarded for it. Right, rank rank our fullbacks in in order. This is going to cause controversy. So. Uh, fourth to first. Oh, that's hot. That is. Come on, quick. Fourth to first. Fourth being the not not the worst because I think we've got all good fullbacks for this league. So I'm gonna I'm gonna give you mine. Tell you if you agree. I'm going. Uh, Bakio go fourth. Mm. I'm then gonna go Brindley third. I'm gonna go McCrory second, and Kelly Evans first. That's I haven't actually I, do it. I haven't actually seen a bad performance from Kelly Evans. I'm probably gonna get slated for that. I haven't. Mm. All season, no, I, I really like Kelly Evans. He, it's just the grit and determination. Could could you put McCrory at right back and expect the exact same, if not better, level of performance they're putting at left back? No. Could you put Bakayoko at right back and do the same? Probably not. No. Brindley's a good player. I like Brindley, but um, I also really like Kelly Evans. It's Kelly a tough Evans. one, you know. But you know, all the injuries we have at the minute, he might he might be in at left back again anyway. Yeah. What? A, yeah. Great player. Yeah. Uh, and then Rob's second part and what? Um, where does this leave Doyle getting back in the squad? After O'Brien, I'm presuming he means and uh, Rose. I, I think uh, it's no. So it'll be no surprise that it'll probably slot straight back in. But who for? I don't know. Because I don't think O'Brien and Doyle. O'Brien will, played out of his skin. I, I don't think, think O'Brien and Doyle will work that well. I think we give Rose a lot of sticks. He doesn't do as much as we expect. But I think if you were to take him out, would notice. Yeah, yeah, he's a huge presence, I think. Because Massive he pops up all over the pitch. Yeah. That's a really tough one. Where does that lead Doyle? So two more two more games Doyle's got. Yeah, because he was playing O'Brien on the wing, wasn't he? Because he was struggling to get him in centre mid. He's never going to get on the wing now. No, no, no. And I wouldn't want him on the wing. No, neither would I. I prefer him in the middle. I, I don't know. It is tough. But for me, I'd keep it Rose and uh, O'Brien. He's not going to do it. He's not going to do it. I do... I will keep it all the time, uh, Rosen and Brian, because I, I like Doyle. I think he's a great player. The, the trouble is, I think with those three players, not one of them is going to want to sit on the bench, and they'll happily sit on the bench. No. So you've got that. Like you talk about managers having nice selection dilemmas, and we've been saying, "Oh, I've only got two fit centre mids," but look what's happened. Now I've got three. They're probably like for me as well. They're probably the most vocal players that we have. F- from the inside, from the outside looking in. I'd say they're probably the most uh, the players that have like the most voice in the changing room uh, in yeah. Doyle, O'Brien, and Rose. I think it's that's, that's a tough. That's a horrible decision to me. It is. <clears throat> I, like he always says, oh, it's a good problem to have, but this one's. N- yeah, no, it could really. I don't know. I don't know. I do think O'Brien has a good head on his shoulders, though. Yeah, but at the same time, that him and Doyle are two players that are coming to the end of their careers and are not going to sit on the bench. In the national league, in a promo like playoff chasing running, yeah, that's tough. And I, I don't know. And then Mitch Rose is a player that, look at his age, like he should be in the prime. Yeah. And I do think it. I, I don't know. I I wouldn't like a midfield. I think a midfield with like Enzio and Cal Roberts, and then O'Brien and Doyle would be an imbalance. I don't. I I don't know. I don't know. Have they played together this season? I don't know, but I, I call it. I, but... I don't know. I'd like to see it, you know. Yeah. But like you say, that's tough. Great questions from Rob there. Yeah, they're good ones. Um, and we haven't really even given an answer. I can't give an answer. So I can't. We'll leave that to. Uh, it's like yes. Yeah, my answer to that is I don't know how he slots back in because how do you put him over O'Brien and how do you put him over Rose? That, and if you have to put him over one of them, how do you choose from O'Brien? Because O'Brien was, his passing was unbelievable against Chelsea he's so calm he's like the weight on his passes oh but then Doyle does have that and he's like I, I don't know it's hard the way I'm looking at it the only way I can justify this is well, I don't even know but if I, if we were, if not were to make it to Wembley yeah which centre mid would you want in the pitch at Wembley and then I can then I can confidently say yeah. O'Brien yeah. and Rose yeah because it's, it's tough that's, the, that's the only thing that's no, the only no, it's a, it's, no it's a good way to put it because like, you'd just be sort of wincing every time you, there's a, a, a possibility at Doyle and also a when, Wembley is a big pitch I know Doyle's played a lot of football but it's going to be the end of the season like realistically we're not going to catch Barrow no. unless they have an absolute meltdown so that leaves the option of Wembley 
And Laura's been to Wembley now. I'm not going to talk about Wembley. You just did. No, I'm not going to talk about it anymore. I'm jinxing it. Uh, if we lose five in the spin, it's my fault. Yeah. So, so uh, yeah, we'll put that one on YouTube. Yeah. So, answer for me is Kelly Evans. I mean, if he has to go left back, put him left back. But for me, put him in preferred right back. Um, and Doyle. I'll leave it up to Wally. I can't make the decision. No, no way. <laughs> Uh, another thing you you want to talk about this one as well yeah so Ooh. yeah I think there's probably not going to be one not time that disagrees with me on this one maybe f- fans some more up and down the National League just say it's not we're not at, we're not like just having a good old moan this is like it's not like decisions have gone against us and we're just moaning about it this is genuine isn't it yeah right. yeah, yeah so obviously we've dropped down a level but the officiating is awful absolutely poor oh, like there's so many decisions that come into my mind when I think of officiating that I've just seen at Madeleine this season and it's just like what are they seeing one that comes into my head instantly was um, Kelly Evans got snapped a couple of weeks ago against Dover didn't he yeah 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 nothing Rawlinson's red card that got overturned yeah it's just there's so much like luckily that there's there's cameras at the game so it could be overturned. Otherwise it wouldn't have been and you know, it would have been without him, but just there's been so many times this season, like if I sit in the stand and I say that was a foul, if it was a going against us mm. and I'll agree with the ref if it's a it's a it's a right decision, I'll sit there and say right decision, fair play. What about the goal we scored where where I can't remember who it's against off my head, we took a free kick and the, we scored and the oh, ref said the yeah, wall yeah, wasn't yeah. ready yeah, yeah, yeah. that's not our fault yeah. that's their fault but yeah it's, it's, it's things like that so uh, I, there's just so many things that I could say it's so poor isn't it like, it feels like it needs to be clamped down on 100% like what game was it the Dagenham game Dagenham. The, that I can honestly yeah, say that was probably one of the worst refs I've ever been I've ever seen life. I he think was it, blowing for everything. In that the FA Trophy, I think because it's not a league match, I think they use lower standard refs. If they're, like obviously, if they deem the ref to be that standard, yeah. to blood them in with teams of not standard. Yeah, yeah. But <sighs> come on, and not not to like sound like oh we're not county, but refs would probably like th- there's no hiding away from the fact that we do have the highest uh, league attendance. So refs probably come thinking like I've got to be, you know, on point today. Mm. I've got to be making the right decisions. All the fans will be on my back. But for me, that's just. I feel like um, I feel like last season. I don't know if it's because knots weren't doing very well and there was just anger everywhere. But if a ref made a bad decision, fans would go absolutely nuts. This season, there's not the same anger. I think because it's happening so often. It's so bad. It's so yeah. blatant. I think a lot of that was probably down to frustration. Definitely, definitely. but. Yeah, something needs to be done. I think. And what can they do? Officiate the officials. Obviously, it's hard to do, but something needs to be done. One of these refs, if if well, I've always said I'm not mentioning the national stadium, but if we got there, one no, I think if you get to like a playoff final, I think a ref from a higher division drops down, don't they? I hope so. I'm sure in the championship they get a prem ref. In League One, they get a championship ref. Like, there was questionable refs in League Two, I think, but you know when you drop down. There's been a couple of decent refs. Um, I think the ref against Stockport in the start of the season, I thought he was a good ref. Mm. Um, I can't remember who the other team was, but you know, like the the games at home recently have been poor, poorly officiated. Yeah, yeah, nightmare stuff. Yeah. Right, third question. Um, is from Max. So he said, obviously, Neil Lardy likes four strikers. Uh, who would we like to see come in if we do make another addition? So. If we were to get another striker, um, do we need another striker first of all? Let's let's break it down. Do we need another striker? Um, or being well, I don't think we do. We've got goals in Enzio, mm-hmm. goals in Roberts, mm-hmm. goals in Thomas, Dennis, Wooten. Halfway line screamers in Doyle. What are you doing? We're taking Doyle out. Yeah. We've got five players that will all score again this season I think yeah definitely but the question is sort of saying one one injury though yeah exactly yeah one, one injury is all it takes to be you know on the back foot with your forwards so, when you've only got three 
And Neil Ali has said it time and time again that he does like to have four strikers. Yeah. So to cut to the question, who would you like to see come in? There's not a particular player that I'd like to see come in, but for me personally, I'd like to see sort of uh, like a, a a quick off the mark player. You know, that's just going to make those runs in behind. Like we lost Tyson, who's quick. Yeah, but like injury prone. Yeah, I know. That's obviously I think why we maybe let him go is out of frustrating time at knots. That's why he went to Chesterfield. But you know, if we could get like a, a reliable sort of yeah, sort of like maybe Tyson, but a bit younger, maybe a future investment. I think all fans want goal scorers. Yeah. But and I think like if you look down, I can't remember his name, the Kings Lynn striker. Already on twenty eight goals this season, I think. Yeah. That's someone I wouldn't want to see come in. That sounds daft, but like that would just upset the balance. I think like you said, it has to be someone quick off the mark, but that's gonna be a sub. Yeah. Because what don't break up the partnership of we just got three goals. Yeah. Like don't break up the partnership of of um Woodson and Thomas. I think in in, like, like you said in the Christmas special when I asked how many goals we'll score and you said 86 we're going to score 86 this season <laughs> we're going to score 86 we've only got we've got 14 games to score 40 goals and like you said it's going to happen so if we keep up the, the run of the last game we'll just scrape it just we'll have to score three a game that's easy mate unbelievable yeah, Andy on the, the 86 goals goodness me but yeah, I, I wouldn't like to see a prolific striker from a lower league come in right now. I feel like we're always jinx with strikers like that as well. Like we always ha- seem to s- sign these players that are going to do really well, and yeah, especially when they're at the high end of the game. You know, when they're banging in goals, they come to knots and they're just like, it's not the same player. <laughs> no. Yeah. I, but then what? So we've established we want a sub to come in. You want a quick off the mark? I, I don't. Just a little. I think I think a target man, a target man sub. Because if Wharton gets injured, uh, we've got no one in that area. We've got a prolific. Well, we've got we've got a, a a very good goal scoring sub in Dennis. Yeah. Already. I feel like if Thomas was to get injured, Dennis replaces him. But I think you need you need a target man to replace Wharton if he was to get injured. And, like I've, I don't want to mention it. 93rd minute at Wembley <laughs> you put the big man on <laughs> you mentioned it three times that target man Wooten Ben Turner back from injury you put them all up front to win the game yeah put Ben Turner Ben Turner would be the target man ben, yeah, yeah, but, he's got it in the locker yeah but he's not a striker is he I, how do you know that you've <laughs> only seen him play centre back <laughs> yeah so there how you go how do you know that <laughs> yeah, <just help. laughs> yeah. no I, I think we'd uh, benefit from someone like that you know that you know when the legs are getting a bit tired towards the end of the game you know, slow the play down a little bit. Just someone to inject a bit of en- uh, en- energy into yeah, the game. Yeah, exactly. Fresh legs. I think that could work, but that's all. All saying, if we were to bring a striker in. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't. I don't think we will. Tom, no, I don't think we will either. To be honest. I think we're done. Mm, yeah, it's it's tough because Oddly does get asked this a lot in his presses, mm. and he never gives a direct answer to so say no. Yeah. Yeah. Um. I think they're always on the look and the owners I don't think they shy away from wanting to buy players either no. which is you know, if it's going to benefit the club yeah. investment wise or anything yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, last thing very quickly then I want to talk about Saturday's game with Yeovil FA Trophy yep um, what kind of team do we put out one that's going to win at Wembley <laughs> you not, don't mention Wembley I won't get that um, I, I, don't, I, I don't know because we've obviously got a bit of an injury problem at the moment I think we've got like six maybe seven um, like first team bench players that are, are not being involved because of injuries so the last thing we need now is further injuries to, to worsen you know our chances of going up in saying that I do think if we get further in this competition it could be a huge boost to the team you know redeem what happened at Yeovil in, in the uh, in the league because I think we should have won that game even though they did thrashes in the end but to go there and you know Essentially, what we did at Chesterfield, like they beat us one 0 in the league, they came to our place, we beat them three 0 I know it's away, but it'd just be nice to right the wrong and just get further in the competition. Oh, because I yeah. just think, like we said it, a trip to Wembley, be great for confidence. Yeah, I'm a big believer that we should go for this. 
obviously not you don't want your best best team out we put Wooten and Thomas and everyone up front uh, everyone on the pitch and Wooten gets injured and then Jim O'Brien's injured again and then yeah. you see it happen and then I don't know Lacey gets a suspension or something like that you're in a real mess but there's no cup competition that we've got a better chance of winning it, it, years years we're not we're never going to win the FA Cup never going to win the, the League Cup Johnson's Paint Trophy or whatever it is now the EFL Cup or something if we get back we'd have to get back up to win that and even then <sighs> slim chance of that yeah FA Trophy is a mad like chance to win silverware yeah I would dust the old cabinet down yeah crazy I, I agree though I, I don't like I say I don't think we should put you know a league team out but maybe a, a lesser side like even like Bird mm. I like Bird he's a great player and you know he slots in later on in the games like he has been coming on later on yeah to, to difficult games and he's shown he's shown his uh, his ability and I think he can definitely just go straight into a starting eleven. I, I, the players I've seen there Bird uh, Crawford, Dennis, Osborne, uh, Bakayogo. If if fit, um, yeah, they're they're players I want to see in. Who would you pair Bird with? Um, tough. Hmm. Either of them, Lacey or Rawlinson. I'd go Rawlinson. But uh, the good thing about this is it's a uh, it's a Saturday game. Yeah. Saying that, haven't we got five on the following Tuesday? Yeah. or something like that but crazy yep. so many things to think about but how positive so is positive the season. Oh. so good it's so it's so good yeah. if you haven't seen the fan chats after the Chesterfield game go and watch them because everyone is just so happy yeah. so good I remember finishing um, I think it was nil nil at home to Stockport and there was a lot of like downheartedness and I know it was early in the season but this it's a running now yeah. it's a running yeah. it's massive we haven't got many Tuesday games I think we've got one so every week now is like a cup final mm-hmm. get get there um, hope Barrow slip up and we're making a sort on first it sort of feels like last season but on a much better scale where every next game is your most important game yeah, definitely failing to get Barrow's place we need second or third yeah we want to get straight into the semis we don't want an extra game that's that is the last thing we need definitely not uh, so thank you for watching episode 3 of the Pavis Perspective um, like George said at the start we've got some, some decent guests lined up in the next few episodes uh, really excited to bring them to you um, <clears throat> anything you'd like to see or if you just enjoyed it please let us know because uh, we do go to a lot of effort to make some of these videos and as I said if you haven't already uh, subscribed please do so and let's hope for a really great rest of the season